Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Israel denies threatening South Africa's international relations minister. Naledi Pandor says that she's worried about the safety of her children since South Africa's filed a case before the ICJ accusing Israeli forces of committing genocidal acts against Palestinians. Also, Senegalese security forces use tear gas and rubber bullets to hold back protesters condemning the delay to elections which had been due this month. The moves plunged the country into a political crisis. And a U.S. museum's handed back looted royal items to a Ghanaian Asante regent 150 years after they were taken by marauding British soldiers. The Fowler Museum says the artifacts were bought by an American collector and that the returns are permanent as it tries to operate more ethically. But first, South Africa's Minister of International Relations has said that she's asked for extra security and has accused Israeli intelligence of trying to intimidate her. They've denied this, but Lady Pandor has said that she's received threatening messages and that even her children have been mentioned on social media. Pandor's allegedly been targeted over South Africa's case before the International Court of Justice, accusing Israel of genocide for its bombardment of Palestinians in Gaza. Our Eunice Masson joins us now with more from Cape Town. Eunice, so what more can you tell us about these these threats to which Pandor is referring? Not much, to be quite honest. Uh, the foreign minister, now Lady Pandor, spoke about the intimidations only briefly uh, after last night's uh, State of the Nation address. So offering very little insight into exactly how she was intimidated. And we do not know exactly how serious it is either. Pandor's department has not elaborated on the claims. And she also said that she requested that her security should be increased. And whether it has been beefed up is unclear. The police national spokesperson told France 24 that the police cannot disclose uh, matters regarding the safety and security uh, of its cabinet members, which is understandable. So at this point, we do not know the serious nature of the intimidations, except that, as you've mentioned, that Israel has in the meantime denied the accusations. Now, Eunice, uh, in, uh, you know, it was briefly mentioned during the State of a Nation address by Pandor, but she still said that uh, she kind of suggested that she expects to come under fire for um, South Africa's case before the ICJ by saying that it was worth it as there is a cause underway. What does she mean by that? What cause? Yes, I think the cause can be described as uh, multifaceted. Firstly, uh, the cause, as you've mentioned, is the ongoing court case in which South Africa claims Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, but secondly, it's a, a much broader cause where South Africa's ruling party, the ANC, uh, has a long-standing relationship uh, with Palestine. Uh, that dates back to the former statesman Nelson Mandela, who led the ANC from an anti-apartheid movement to the current governing body. Uh, so from its own background, the ANC views Israel's control over Gaza and the West Bank as a form of apartheid. And on this point, South Africa has on numerous occasions in the past condemned the apartheid-style state of Palestinians and called for it to stop, uh, which I think uh, is, is the main cause, uh, what the minister has referred to. Thanks very much. Uh, Eunice Masson there for us in Cape Town. Now, Senegal's justice ministers deny that the delay of presidential elections due this month is an attempted power grab. The moving of the polls less than three weeks before they were due has sparked widespread condemnation, both inside and outside of Senegal. On Friday, riot police clashed with protesters in the capital using tear gas and rubber bullets against demonstrators. Clovis Casali brings us more from Dakar. Clashes on the streets of Dakar, as you can see, uh, demonstrators set fire to tyres, uh, putting wood, everything they could find to uh, block uh, police from taking these uh, small streets around Nation Square. Over there, same scenes, uh, plumes of smoke, angry demonstrators, demonstrators saying they have the right to protest, to say no to their president, Macky Sall. Macky Sall, who's postponed the presidential election from February 25th to December 15th. Aujourd'hui, Today, Senegal, the Senegalese people and young people are fighting just to get their freedom back, just to get their sovereignty back. Yes, Macky Sall has postponed the elections that were supposed to be held on the 25th of February, and we all know this is a constitutional coup. 
constitutionnel. Macky Sall est dictateur. We are tired of Macky Sall, so tired. What we are simply asking for is to be able to go to the polls at the date set out by the constitution. That's all we are asking for, nothing else. This rally was set to be in this landmark, this uh, special venue, Nation Square. Um, authorities did not allow it, but uh, crowds still headed towards uh, that uh, landmark. And I can tell you, heavy police presence, anti-riot forces deployed and now uh, trying to uh, and tr preventing uh, demonstrators from reaching that landmark. Uh, civil society groups and opposition parties, of course, called for this rally. They say they want Macky Sall to not hang on to power. That's what they say. They want him to go after the end of his second term. That is on April 2nd. And many demonstrators here telling us they have a right to vote, a right to vote on February 25th. Now, the South African double Olympic women's champion, Casta Semenya, is trying to raise funds to push forward with her legal battle against rules that would force female athletes with high testosterone to medically reduce their levels by taking drugs. The 33-year-old won a discrimination case against Switzerland at the European Court of Human Rights last year, in which she accused the Court of Arbitration for sport of unfair treatment. Now, Swiss authorities have since taken the matter to the ECHR's Grand Chamber. Semenya has always legally identified as female and has been, but has been barred from competing in some distances. And the Confederation of African Football says it doesn't know when the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations is likely to happen because of congestion in the calendar. Scheduling issues have cropped up because of FIFA's revamped 32-team club World Cup in the US in mid-2025. Now, the ongoing 2023 AFCON itself was pushed back to this year, 2024, and it is on the brink of wrapping up after an exciting tournament. And fans are heading into a weekend that they will see hosts, Ivory Coast, face down against Nigeria for the final on Sunday, with the third place match being played on Saturday. Uh, our James Vazna is in Ivory Coast and brings us more. Well, after four weeks of football and 50 games played, there's only two left and it all starts on Saturday with South Africa taking on the DR Congo. The two, two teams uh, going face to face in the stadium just behind us here in the center of Abidjan and two sides coming into this one, dragging their feet because listening to Bros, the uh, South Africa manager, well, this is a game that shouldn't even be played. The only importance to him is to win the tournament, fighting for third place. Nobody, he says, is going to be remembering that all of the performances apart from the winners, are going to be forgotten further down the line. And, uh, of course, uh, it's frustration for DR Congo too uh, because this means that it's now 50 years since they last managed to reach the final. Once again, not managing to get there. The last time they managed to win the tournament and they're going to have to wait uh, once more. On Sunday, it's back to the country's biggest capacity stadium for the big showdown between Nigeria and the Ivory Coast. The host nation miraculously managing to make it to the final in their own country. They've been getting better uh, game by game and confidence has been growing between the players and from the fans. For some fans, they say, well, that the job is already done. Well, there's still a very big game uh, to come for them on Sunday. Fans, of course, uh, wearing those flashy bright orange shirts all across the city. Street sellers uh, increasing the price as the team's performance has been getting better and improving throughout the last few games. But of course, then they do have to pay, face the Super Eagles, Nigeria, who've been one of the big favorites actually making it through to the final in this competition. Very hard to beat. The two sides actually faced each other in the group stage. It all ended 1-0 for the Super Eagles with just a penalty making the difference between the two. For the host nation, well, there's still just one big game and one match match only from getting glory on home turf. So something there for football fans to look forward to this weekend. That, though, is where we have to leave it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us, though. Do so again if you can. Actually, I think we've got a little bit more time. So some good news uh, for, Ghani for fans of Ghanaian culture. The Fowler Museum at the University of California has permanently returned seven royal artefacts to the Asante King of Ghana. Now that took place on the Silver Jubilee of the monarch and was attended by big political and cultural names from across the country. The items had been looted by British soldiers a century and a half 
earlier, Claire Muller tells us more. Stolen 150 years ago by the British, these Ashanti artifacts are now returning home. On Thursday, the American Fowler Museum permanently returned seven royal objects to the Ashanti king of Ghana, Otomfuo Osei Tutu II, as part of his Silver Jubilee celebrations. Transferred to the Californian Museum in the 1960s, the objects include an elephant-tailed whip, an ornamental chair, two stool ornaments and gold jewellery. Dressed in mourning attire, the chief was keen to mark the occasion. We are here today to commemorate the deeds of the white man who came into Asantiman to loot and destroy it. The historic relics were first received by the kingdom on Monday, which marked the 150th anniversary of the plundering of the Ashanti by British colonial forces in 1874. Thursday's ceremony marks the first return of stolen objects to the people. More from the British Museum are expected later this year. However, they will only be loaned to the Mania Palace for six years. We're waiting for the ones from the British Museum, which should arrive in the fourth or fifth month. When they arrive, we'll also put them on display for you to see, so that everyone knows what the Whites stole from us. This restitution comes amid growing international pressure for European and American museums and institutions to return to their ancestral homelands, African artwork and objects that were looted by former colonial powers. Well, that is all we have time for, for Eye on Africa for now. But do stay with us. We'll be back with more in about 45 minutes. Till then, more news and headlines from around the world coming up. Take care. Between 2012 and 2014, the Syrian conflict spilled over into one of the biggest cities in Lebanon, Tripoli. <laughs> Symbolically divided by Syria Street, the Sunni and Alawite neighborhoods were plunged into a war that was not their own. <laughs> Ten years later, an uneasy peace has returned, but deep scars remain. Watch Tripoli, Syria Street, revisited on France 24 and France24.com.